Hi, this is Rachel Stone with Commonwealth Computer Training in Richmond, Virginia, and I'll be demonstrating the new features of Excel 2013. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the new start screen. When I open Excel, you'll see um, this green panel here on the left with a list of recently opened workbooks and then a shortcut here to open other workbooks. Uh, this Excel, it's green, and Word, it's blue, PowerPoint is orange, etc. with the other Office programs. Over on this side, I have the option to use one of the new uh, just dynamic templates that comes built in, or I can search here at the top for other templates online. Here you'll see a shortcut to my SkyDrive account. Um, Office 2013 is designed to integrate with the cloud, specifically with Microsoft's SkyDrive and SharePoint. This is great for those of you who prefer to save your work online uh, for access from anywhere at any time um, with your tablet or mobile device. Um, and the account details are here up in the upper right. I'm going to select this file to open. And here we are in the Excel screen. Here is a shortcut to the SkyDrive account again, still in the upper right. And I'll take a quick look at the uh, file tab. Now when I select it, I can't see the other top tabs anymore. I have to click this arrow to go back to them. But the list is pretty similar to what it was before. I'll go back. Oh, I'll show you Save As quickly. And here's shortcuts for me to save to my SkyDrive uh, locally. And I can add a new uh, place in the cloud. All right, now I'll go back to my worksheet. Um, the tab driven interface is a bit cleaner than it looked in the 2007 and 2010 versions. Um, you'll see that the tabs are now in all caps. And to the upper right, I have this little graphic display. And that can actually be customized. Uh, I can get there a couple of ways. I'll go this way by going to my SkyDrive and then Account Settings. And I have an option here for my office background and theme. So I'll choose, let's say, uh, calligraphy. You can see it changes to more of a scripty look. I can also change my theme from being white in the background up there to either light gray or dark gray. And then it says I darken the color here. It darkens my panel here. So I'll go with that calligraphy dark gray. And I'll use this button to get back out. Um, now, also similar to the 2007-2010 versions, um, I have the contextual tabs that will appear. So when I select my smart art, you'll see there's the contextual tabs for formatting that. Also are the same, my right clicks and keyboard shortcuts, all still the same as those previous versions. All right, so the first hot new feature we're going to talk about is Flash Fill. Uh, with this, Excel will detect patterns in what you're entering, and as soon as it figures out what you're doing, uh, the flash fill will enter the rest of the data for you in one fell swoop, following the pattern that it figured out. So I'm going to add a column here. I'll right-click and insert uh, for email addresses. And I'll put in my first entry, which is the first initial and last name, at email.com. I'll put in a few more. And let's see, there we go. After my next entry, you'll see that it's detected my pattern. It's filled in the rest. As soon as I see that list pop up, I'm going to press enter, okay? And I also have this other pop up. I just wanna confirm here that I accept the suggestions. Next, I'd like to extract the last name from the full name column. So I'll add another place for that here. And I'll enter the first person's last name and the second. And notice as soon as I'm typing it, again, it extracts that last name. Notice it's following my format of being in all caps. I'll press Enter to accept. And again, I'll go to the little flash fill pop-up and make sure it knows I accept those suggestions. You can also combine data from other columns. In this case, I want to create a filing code. And here, I want it to be the first and last initial of the employee along with their extension. So I'll put AG for Andy Graves and then his extension number. And then I'll do for carry step C, S, and her extension. And again, it's detected my pattern. I'll press enter. And just to be certain, I'm going to confirm that I accept that suggestion. So as you can see, flash fill is powerful. It is a time saver. All of these could have been accomplished with formulas, but this was much faster. Another great new feature that's also intuitive is quick analysis. Let's go to another worksheet. 
Uh, we're going to select some cells that contain numbers that we want to work with. Now when I select this group of cells, this quick analysis button will automatically appear. It will also appear if I select um, cells with numbers and text. So when I click the quick analysis button, it gives me shortcuts to other options that are also up on the ribbon. But it's just nice to have the little shortcuts here. So I have the option to do uh, some of my conditional formatting. Uh, let's see, I want to see everyone who exceeded their sales goal. So I'm going to choose greater than. I'll select the sales goal cell and click OK. And there's everyone who exceeded their $2,800 sales goal. Some other options under quick analysis. Um, I'll choose totals here. And this gives me a live preview. Notice I roll over these options and I'll see the totals going across my columnar data. I'll scoot over to the right here and I'll see my row data as well. And let's say I'd like to see the percent total or their percentage of sales from the whole. I'd also like to see a spark line. So I'm going to add another column for that. I'll right click and insert, go back and select my data. And under quick analysis, I'll go to spark lines and choose the line. I'll make that a little wider here. And with my spark line, I'd like to format that. And on the contextual tab that appears for it, I'll choose markers. That gives me a little point at each change in quarter. So now I have a little bird's eye view of their sales trends for that quarter or for that series. Let's also look at charts here. I'm going to select my data again, go back to quick analysis. I'll go to charts and it has several chart samples uh, here for me. Okay. I want to show you another place you can get to your charts as well. Um, again, I've clicked a cell within my list. I'll go to the insert tab and in the charts group, I've got this recommended charts button. I'll click that and it displays for me some charts uh, that it recommends based on the type of data in my range. And it also has a definition below each chart so it, I'll know the type of um, display I'll get. I'll click choose this columnar chart and go to OK. I'll make this a little bigger so it's easy for everyone to see. And one difference between 2007 10 and 2013 is uh, they've reduced the number of tabs you have for the chart. It used to be the design, format, and layout tabs. They've done away with layout, but instead they've added these little buttons over to the right of your chart. You have chart elements, chart styles, and chart filters. So let's play with these buttons for a moment. Uh, the chart elements button, when you click that, it shows you the little individual pieces um, of the chart. Let's uh, play with the legend. I'll remove the check for legend. You see the legend is gone. I'll check the box. You'll see it's back. Now they've put it on the side, though. But I've got this little arrow options button that lets me select where it's going to go. Notice I have a live preview. So let's put this at the, uh, at the left. And if I go back and choose more options, it opens this panel on the right hand side of my screen. And I'll choose top here. But this panel will actually stay open. It will update depending on what element of the chart I select. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. And we'll look at this button, which is your chart styles button. It has a few preset styles you can choose from, things that include data labels and so on. And you also have uh, different color schemes you can apply. Okay. And also the monochromatic schemes as well. These are good if you have uh, if you don't have a color printer. I think my favorite button here though is the filter button. It's powerful because you can uh, decide exactly how much data you want to display. Let's say let's say I want to get rid of just a few of my employees here. I just want to see a handful of them. I'll hit apply, and narrow, I've narrowed it down to see just this group. Okay. I can always go back, check some more, or go back to select all and apply, get everybody back again. All right. Let's take a look at the review tab. And I'm going to get rid of this chart so it's out of the way. And I also want to point out um, a new button here on the review tab 
called Start Inking. Now I happen to be using a touchscreen laptop and if you have a touchscreen or tablet this will work for you. Um, you can actually mark on your document just as you would be marking with a regular pen or highlighter. So I've clicked Start Inking. I'm going to click the yellow highlighter and I'm just going to highlight across somebody. My hand's not very steady but I'm doing the best I can here. Or I can click a red felt tip pen and circle a number or I can circle another number here. Now my circles don't look so well. Let's say I want to get rid of one of these. I'll hit the eraser and get rid of that. But that's a really neat little tool that's been added. Uh, and these are just a few highlights from Excel 2013. Um, this is Rachel Stone with Connell Computer Training. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you have, have you join us for a class soon.